Greetings, everybody. Today is August 24th, 2020. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on the bride, the bride of Christ. Now, it's a lot of churches will try to con you, I mean convince, convince you, that the bride of Christ and the church are two different entities. I don't think so. But, hey, what do I know? I'm just some guy that went to Bible college for six years. You know why? Because I wanted to learn their lies so that I could refute them. So, you know, and besides that, you know, I used to use scriptures and uh, try to show that they were in error. That's when I actually believed that they actually served the Lord. I learned my lesson that they don't. They're actually there to deceive. But, uh, you know, they would always throw in my face, well, I went to Bible college, and what did, what did, you, what did you do? You know, so I got tired of hearing all that junk. So that's basically why I went. Um, so, with that in mind, and I'm still on YouTube. I'm amazed, but hey, the Lord's protecting the channel, at least for now. All right, so, where is the first time that the word bride is used in the Bible? Uh, you will notice that in the King James that the word, any word that you look up, usually in the context of the first time that it's used, will give you a fairly good understanding of the, the meaning and usage of the word throughout the rest of the Bible. It doesn't always happen, um, but a lot of times it does. Um, you know, sometimes you got to realize, sometimes the Bible's literal, other times there are figures of speech. For example, when John the Baptist said that, Behold, the Lamb of God that uh, taketh away the sins of the world. He's talking of Christ. Christ was not a four-legged lamb. You know, when Jesus said he was the bread of life. Think about it. So, with that in mind, uh, let's go to Psalms chapter 19. And a couple of you had mentioned that um, you would like me to uh, put it up on the screen, uh, the, the Bible verses as I'm reading them. Uh, I'm going to try to figure out how to do that. Um, but honestly, I, I don't know how to... I know how to do screen, well, I sort of kind of had screen capture from before, but I'm not sure how to, if it'll capture sound or not. I'll have to check that out. What I would suggest is uh, go to the kingjamesbibleonline.org, org. you know, go to Google or whoever and type in kingjamesbibleonline.org, it'll come up, and then just... Uh, you know, read with me. That's, you know, that's what I do. Uh, that's exactly what I do when I'm reading this stuff. Um, until I can figure it out. you got to realize, I'm kind of low-tech. I mean, when I was in college, college, um, we had Windows, I think it was 1.2. I'm serious, people. You're talking back in the 80s. When Windows first came out, I mean, we were doing DOS commands. Uh, that's when I was learning. And I didn't keep up with it uh, until almost, uh, what, about 
2000, 2001. Uh, yeah, I guess it was 99 or 2000 is when I started getting back. And I was working on Windows 98. You know, so I'm not no computer whiz by any shape or stretch of the imagination. So just to let you know. All right, enough about me. Psalms chapter 19. We're going to start at the beginning. I guess we'll read the whole thing. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Now, King David was the author, the probably the great majority of the psalms. I don't think he did all of them, but he did the great majority of them. He writes, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. You know, even when I was a elementary school kid, I uh, was really interested in astronomy. Matter of fact, I was probably the youngest member of the uh, Southern Cross Astrological Society of the uh, Miami Museum of Science and uh, Planetarium. Yeah, we used to uh, go up on the roof of the museum where they had uh, telescopes. And I was hanging out with a bunch of teenagers. You know, they were high school kids, college kids. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but they were they were up there getting high and partying, you know. Uh, we would do that like meteor showers. Well, not we, but they would always take me to the side and be doing something else. But it wasn't until later that I figured out what they were doing, you know, when I got older. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of neat. Uh, Mom and Dad would let me stay out all night. Uh, we would be watching... Uh, meteor showers and you know the moon and looking for stars and stuff and it was kind of neat really um but yeah they turned it into a kind of a party kind of thing but uh, you know what is a what is a fifth or sixth grader i think it was sixth grade you know what do we know but i was always you know the heavens the heavens declare the glory of god i amen to that and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun." which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. So you got a bride and you got a bridegroom. Verse 6. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and a circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect. Indeed, it is. The law of the Lord is perfect. It's just that us and our imperfect, sinful flesh, we can't keep his laws. Impossible. Uh, somebody told me that there, they counted them and there were 613 of them. Well, you break one just one time and you've broken the law. So, I think Jesus was the only one that kept the law. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Uh, forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Did you know that uh, perhaps you've ever heard of what's called a tort, T-O-R-T? -T? It's a thing in the legal system. Uh, for example, somebody runs a red light, smashes into your car, uh, you know, they break your arm, 
and uh, you sue the insurance company, and then the insurance company, after a year and a half of haggling, finally pays you after you go to court. Well, that is called a tort. But in, but believe it or not, that comes from the Bible. If you had a dangerous animal escape and it injured your neighbor, you had to take care of the neighbor until he was fully recovered. So, you know, that actual, that actual legal remedy came from the Bible. Of course, it's been polluted. You know, they don't call it the judicial system for nothing. Uh, yeah, in insurance companies, they'll... Uh, I've heard insurance companies only pay out 12 cents on a dollar in claims, if that. And I wouldn't surprise it. Some of the richest families in the United States... Um, are into insurance, banking, and pharmaceutical. And they also own the media. Yeah, I spent, uh, oh, I don't know how much time, but probably a month or two uh, looking up boards of directors of uh, those corporations and found that... Uh, you know, the guy that's on the board of directors of this bank is on the board of directors of this TV network, who's on this pharmaceutical company's board of directors, is on this insurance company's board of directors. Um, matter of fact, Henry Kissinger uh, was on the board of directors, from what I understand, of over a thousand different companies at one time. I don't know if he still is. A thousand. I mean, it's, you know, he, he wasn't even, he was getting paid from all these different companies to be on the board, but there was probably no way he could attend all those meetings. Absolutely no way. So, you know, certain families. And by the way, the same, the same names would prop, crop up all the time. But we are so far from God's laws in this country anymore. It's it's vile. Do you know the Bible said that wealth was gold, silver, cattle, and land? You know, livestock and land. If you got land, you can grow food. If you got livestock, you've got milk, you've got meat, um, gold and silver, there was a time when this country had gold and silver for coins. Of course, they, uh, the banks got rid of it. Well, they didn't get rid of their co gold and silver coins, but they got they took stole ours. So, but uh, if you, there were three. I think it was three people murdered in Florida. Just I don't know a couple weeks ago. They caught the guy, and the guy that killed him, they let him out of prison because of the corona beer thing, uh, but he had been arrested over 200 times. I mean, can you imagine that? Arrested over 200 times, some of them for violent felonies, and he murdered three people. Well, if we followed God's law, the Bible says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. And the Bible says murderers were to be put to death. Kidnappers, man-stealers, put to death. People that would, uh, witches, put to death. Rapists, put to death. Uh, that would also apply to uh, those that abuse the children. But we don't follow that anymore. Now we've got... Uh, Antichrist in all our law schools and as our attorneys and lawyers. And, you know, look at all the hospitals. All the hospitals were started by churches. And what kind of doctors do you have now? Oh, yeah, you got Dr. Greenberg, Dr. Cohen, Dr. Goldstein, 
Goldberg. Yeah. Yeah, people that uh, antichrist that hate Jesus and his people. So when the Bible says that the statutes and judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether, amen. Verse 9. Psalms 19.9, the fear of the Lord is clean and enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. What would you rather have? Eternal life with the Lord or a lot of gold? Ah, that's a tough choice. 99% of the world would probably say gold. Verse 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Jesus said he comes quickly and he's bringing his reward. You know, he's bringing a reward. In Revelation 22.12, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Okay, back to Psalms 19, verse 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Huh. Presumptuous sins. I gotta look this up. All right. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Uh, Noah Webster was a believer and he was a linguist, a Bible scholar. He knew Hebrew, he knew Greek, which were the Bible languages. Uh, I mean, the guy was a true scholar. I mean, you know, a linguist is a language scholar. I mean, the guy knew all kinds of languages, like over 20 of them, fluently. I mean, you could take him to Italy, you could take him to Spain, you could take him to France. I mean, you know... He could carry on a conversation with anybody. He knew the root words for all the, you know, the Latin. Uh, English is a hodgepodge of many different languages. All right, so presumptuous, adjective, bold and confident to excess, adventuring without reasonable ground of success, hazarding safely, safety on two slight grounds, rash, applied to persons, as a presumptuous commander. Um, uh, proceeding from excess to confidence. Arrogant, insolent. Presumptuous pride, unduly confident. Uh, irreverent with respect to sacred things. Willful, done with bold design, rash confidence, or in violation of known duty as a presumptuous sin. So I guess that's uh, like somebody that's a presumptuous sin. I guess that's like uh, making a habit of uh, seeing prostitutes, you know. Uh, not only is it bad, but, you know, you don't care. All right, so, Psalms 19, verse 13. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You see, even in the Old Testament, 
they talk about a redeemer. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 49. I guess we're going to read the whole chapter. Don't want to be accused of pulling verses out of context. You're doing that, Bob. You're not, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, they tell me. Eh, whatever. Their job's to deceive, for the most part. Either deceive or they're being deceived. I don't know. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. Well, guess what? When the, when the, um, what isle printed the Bible, uh, published the Bible in 1611? England, the King James Version. Well, King James didn't, um, he just assembled all the people and paid for the, the, gave them a salary while they translated the Bible. But Greece, Greece is an island nation many islands and what was the new testament written in greek i used to think matthew was written in hebrew because i was listening to the antichrist i don't believe that anymore no matthew through revelation greek greek through and through so and if anybody can show me a uh, an original copy of a manuscript of Matthew written in Hebrew that's about uh, 1,500 years old or older, let me know. I hear there's none. Zero. That's what I got for listening to those uh, messianics. Or is, it, or is it their messed up antics? Yeah, messianics or messed up antics. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name wasn't uh john the baptist he was filled with the holy ghost even from his mother's womb jeremiah um the lord said uh from uh, i oh i'll have to look it up yeah, Jeremiah 1 and verse 5. The Lord says, Behold, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Ah, the nations. What nations? The nations of Israel. The twelve tribes. Same word as the, they use for Gentiles. Um, of course, it wouldn't have made any sense if he said, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the Gentiles. But, you know. So before the Lord formed Jeremiah in the belly, he knew him. And before he was even born, he sanctified him, set him apart, and ordained him to be a prophet unto the nations. In Luke chapter 1, now Luke was a physician. He was a doctor. And I don't think he was a, a dumb country bumpkin like, uh, you know, they try to make these old time people out to be. But, uh, and I bet you Luke probably healed more people than uh, Dr. Uh, Goldberg did. Luke chapter 1, verse 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not Zacharias, John the Baptist's father, right? For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Boy, that's 
that's a testimony, huh? All right. Um, let's see. Isaiah 49, verse 1. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb. The Lord hath called me from the womb. Isaiah was called from the womb. Wow. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And uh, those of you that listen to me for a while, you you know this, but Isaiah, I believe Isaiah is the most quoted book in the New Testament. Quoted a lot. A lot of Messianic prophecies in the uh, book of Isaiah. Uh, in the Greek rendering, it, it, they call it Esaias. E-S-A-I-A-S, I believe. I'd have to look it up. But if you see something with a e -S -I -A -I -A -S or something like that, it's talking about Isaiah. Verse 2, And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. Huh. Where do we read about that? Oh, let's take a look. All right. What about a sword? Well, in Ephesians 6 and verse 17, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, and the sword, sword, of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Huh. All righty. Well, how about Hebrews 4.12? For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Why a two-edged sword? Because it cuts both ways, right? Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Little note here. Um, now, I don't like the word Trinity. It's not a Bible word, but God, but Godhead is a Bible word. And the Bible teaches that man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. And here we just read that um, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So your soul and spirit are not the same. So if you got a soul and you got a spirit and you got a body, how many parts is a person? Three. And we were made in God's image. So how many parts is God? Three. And that's where you get the word Trinity. Tri means three, T-R-I. Uh, T-R-I, not T-R-Y. You ever heard of a tricycle? You know, three wheels? You know, but the word rapture is not in the Bible either, but, you know, it means a resurrection. Of course, the word Bible is not in the word in the Bible either. So, but scriptures is. So, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's scary, people. Now, in Revelation 19.13, speaking of Jesus, it says, And he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 1. Uh, let's see, where do I start? Let's start in verse 9. I, John, Revelation 1, verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, you could always hit the pause button and, uh, you know, call up the uh, King James Bible online and follow me, you know, 
and then you know click the continue button um, so that you can read along with me I'm gonna try to um, start doing um, I guess it's what screen cast o -matic or whatever it is I gotta check that out it's been a long time since I've used that kind of stuff uh, let's see all right so let's go to verse 10 I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega Alpha the first letter in the Greek alphabet Omega the last letter in the Greek alphabet he's not the Aleph Tav which is the first and the last letters in the Hebrew if my information's correct um, which they like to make us think no Greek people saying I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia Asia Minor that's what they call Greece Greece is what they call Asia Minor unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardius and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea all churches in Greece And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Now remember, this is speaking about what Christ looks like. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Have you ever looked at a, um, a gas burner on a stove? What color is the flame? Blue, right? I mean, you know, it can be orange or yellow. But I mean, usually I, every gas stove that I've ever seen was a rich blue color. And his eyes were a f as a flame of fire. Did Christ have white hair, white as snow, and blue eyes? And his feet like undefined brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and here's the punchline, and out of his mouth, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. The Word of God, right? The Word of God is... Um, Sharp as a two-edged sword, right? We just read that. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So his uh, countenance, his look on his face, shining like the sun, bright. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. All right, let's go back to Isaiah 49. Uh, I guess we'll start from the beginning. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. Well, Isaiah was speaking the word of God. He was a prophet. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me. He made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. What's a polished shaft? Like an arrow, people. In his quiver hath he hid me. Uh, what do you hold? What, what is, what's in a quiver? Well, guess what? I was in archery when I was uh, yeah, elementary school. 
I enjoyed archery. Dad bought me an archery set. I had a quiver. That's where you stick your arrows. I know, it's not a normal word nowadays, right? Uh, matter of fact, when I was in uh, junior high, middle school, um, I was taking archery and physical education, PE. And my coach was a, uh, he got a scholarship in college for archery. Guy was good, man, I'm telling you. But he said, uh, anybody that can beat me at archery gets an A in the class. So I walked up to him and said, can I bring my uh, bow and arrow set from home? And he says, sure. Because I didn't like, the one I had was better than what he had at school. I had a nice fiberglass bow. If I remember correctly, it was about a 35 pounder. So believe it or not, I brought that to school, you know, and I was in, uh, I think, science class or one of my classes. My teacher's like, uh, Bob, what is that? Oh, that's my bow and arrow set for for class. Uh, can you put that in the corner, please? You know, today, can you imagine what would happen if you uh, brought a bow and arrow set to school nowadays? Oh, my gosh. The uh, uh, SWAT team would be called, you know. They'd take you away in handcuffs, probably go to prison for six months or a year, you know, as a terrorist. Uh, yeah, when I was in high school, kids would take their trucks to school and have a shotgun in the gun rack at high school. Nobody ever worried about it, you know. Principal would be walking by and go, oh, hey, Jeremy what's that on your gun rack there in your truck oh that's my that's my uh that's my 12 gauge oh can i see it you know yeah that's a nice 12 gauge yeah now you know swat team right oh yeah my have how things have changed of course this was back in uh early early 70s what changed what changed people they threw God out of the uh, prayer and Bible reading, God out of the schools. And people say, well, why, if there's a God, why, why didn't God stop the school shooting? And I'm sure God would reply, well, pff, I'm not allowed in school. Why would I stop the shooting? You don't want me in school, no problem. Well, I, I'm, I'm, not necess I'm not trying to mock God, but, you know, that's... I've heard something along those lines. But yeah, God's not allowed in school. But guess what? One day he's going to come back and he's going to school them. Oh yeah. Now why does God have a quiver? Think about it. Why? Because God has arrows. Uh, go to Numbers 24, verse 8. God brought him forth out of Egypt. Who? Israel. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Now, you know, they have turned the unicorn into a horse with a, hor uh, a horse with a horn sticking out of its forehead. A mythical creature. Uh, but if you look up an Indian or Asian rhino, rhinoceros, you will see where it says unicornus, unicornis, unicornus, rhinoceros, or rhinoceros, I don't know. But it's an Indian rhino, which is different than the African rhino, which has two horns. The Indian rhino has one. So the devils always change everything. When did a rhinoceros become a, ho a horse? I mean, really. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations his enemies and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. And pierce them through with his arrows. God is doing this. Read it. It said, God brought him forth out of Egypt. 
the subject didn't change. Deuteronomy 32.23 I, speaking of the Lord, I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. Deuteronomy 32.42 I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Job 6 4. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. Did you catch that? For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. The poison thereof drinketh up my spirit. The terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. Now remember, Job, uh, Satan made a bet with God that uh, he could, you know, do all these bad things to Job and get go Job to curse God. And, uh, you know, Job was thinking, oh, it's the Lord doing this to me. Eventually he finds out that it was the devil, but, and he, he was restored. Honestly, I believe that uh, Job's children died, but I believe that the Lord resurrected them. I It says that the Lord restored Job. Uh, if that is, if I'm understanding that correctly, and to me, Job is a difficult book. I don't think it's as difficult as uh, some of the other books, but um, it says that the Lord restored Job. I believe his children were resurrected. But that's, you know, my opinion. All right, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 5. I'm not going to read this whole thing. But uh, just know that the uh, Lord is not happy with what's going on. And he's bringing punishment upon them. Verse 14. Moreover, I will make thee waste, and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt, an instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee, when I shall execute judgment, execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury, and in furious rebukes, I, the Lord, hath spoken it. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine. Did you catch that? When I, this is the Lord speaking, when I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. You know what, people? This could be the Lord talking to us today. All right, you know, think about it. This is evil beasts. You want to see evil beasts? Go to any, any large city go to detroit chicago los angeles miami new york city any of them you'll see evil beasts all right so all right back to isaiah 49 verse 2 and he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me, and said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. What is vain? It means worthless. I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. 
see, Isaiah, you know, preached unto Israel, but I guess he felt that it was falling upon deaf ears. That's kind of how I feel like sometimes when I'm doing these Bible studies. You know, I do a Bible study, and it's four years old, and it's got a hundred, a hundred views. Yeah, you know. But if a couple of you learn something that helps you stay out of the flames, it's worth it. Because boy, I sure don't do this for money. That's for sure. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught, for nothing. And in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. See, judgment works both ways. It's bad for the wicked, but it's for the righteous, it's good. You know, righteous judgment. Verse 6. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Now remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. God himself changed Jacob's name to Israel. From what I understand, Jacob means supplanter, like a trickster. But Israel means like uh, rules with God or prince of God, prince with God. Something along those lines, depending upon who you talk to. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Same word as nations. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to whom, uh, to him whom men despiseth to him whom the nation abhorreth, that means hate, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel, he shall choose thee. Who's the Redeemer of Israel? Christ. And he was uh, to whom man despised, to him whom the nation abhorred or hated. You know, most, most the people didn't love Christ. Verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, in, a, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritages that thou mayest say to the prisoners go forth to them that are in darkness show that yourselves they shall feed in the ways and their pastures shall be in all high places what prisoners People, let me tell you, um, if you haven't studied it out, Abraham's bosom, the rich man, and Lazarus. All the Old Testament saints went to a special compartment in hell. They weren't being tortured, but they were still separated from the Lord. All, of, all, the, all those of the Old Testament before Christ came went to Abraham's bosom where Lazarus was but the rich man was in the flames there was a gulf there was a, a division between the two um, areas compartments of hell you know 
look it up rich man um hit that little uh that little spyglass the magnifying glass thing on my channel off to the right hand top corner above the um the video there and just type in rich man and then it'll you know search it out and what did Christ do for the three days that he was dead his physical body anyways not his spirit and soul he went to Abraham's bosom and preached unto the the angel I mean the, the spirits um, I'm not talking about the fallen angels no he preached unto the Old Testament saints. And then when he was raised from the dead, they're now with him in heaven. I did a study on that. Actually, that was a pretty intense study. I, I, you know, I didn't really understand it when I first started doing it. I mean, I had to really dig through it. Um, but it is true. And now everybody that's in Christ, they go to heaven to be with the Lord, awaiting their resurrected bodies. Verse 9, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, there were Satan's prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourselves, they shall feed in the ways, and their pasture shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst. Ah, here's the here's the uh, the kingdom, people. We're going to go back to this. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water shall he guide them. Boy, I can make a whole Bible study out of this one verse in jesus uh words in matthew 5 and verse 6 he said blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled oh yeah luke 6 21 blessed are ye that hunger now for ye shall be filled blessed are ye that weep now for ye shall laugh John 6, 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. How about we go to Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, you know, uh, well, what are you asking me for? You know the answer to this. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Listen carefully. They shall hunger no more neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Huh. 
Having lived in Florida for the majority of my life, in the summer here, it's miserable. Hot. Yeah, I, you know, dad got a transfer down here when I was, I guess I was like two and a half years old. You know, company one day called him in the office and said, how do you like working here? He says, fine, I like working here. How would you like to continue to work here? Uh, yes, I'd like to continue working here. Well, good, because we just transferred you to Florida. Okay. And that was back when uh, Miami actually spoke English, and it was safe back in them days. Yeah. But uh, that was a long time ago. So they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Isaiah 49 and verse 10. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. See, Isaiah ties right into uh, Revelation sometimes. Verse 11, And I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. Behold, All right, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Isaiah 49 and verse 12. Behold, these shall come from far and low, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinem. Sinem, S-I-N, Sin-M. Um, Behold, these shall come from far and low, these come from the north and from the west. Okay, if they're in Jerusalem, what's north of Jerusalem? Europe. What's in the west? Uh, well, America is in the west. What's north and west? England, Spain, France. You know, think about it. Behold, these shall come from far and low. These from the north and from the west and from the land of Sinem. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Yeah. Everybody thinks, oh yeah, the Lord's forsaken us. But, what does Isaiah say? Verse 15. Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. A woman might forget her child, but the Lord will never. Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Wow. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. Lift up thine eyes round about and behold. All these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, saith the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all as with an ornament and bind them on thee as a bride, as a bride doeth. Well, that's what this study is about a bride, right? So, as I live, saith the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe, clothe thee with them all as with an ornament and bind them on thee as a bride doeth. 
For thy waste and thy desolate places in the land of thy destruction shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants, and they that swallow thee up shall be far away. The children which thou shalt have after thou hast lost the other shall say again in thine ears, This place is too straight for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, Who hath begotten me these seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro, and who hath brought up these, behold, I was left alone, these, where had they been? Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders." And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their faces toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. Wow! And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Turn your Bible to the verse, uh, uh, third chapter of Revelation. We're going to read a little something that uh, if you attended John Hagee's church for 50 years, you'd never hear this verse ever preached. Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Wow. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. See, we're going to be tried, just like a trial. Are you going to be faithful? Or will you want the things of the world? Behold, I come quickly, and hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. He that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven for my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Oh yeah. Isaiah 49 and verse 23, And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and they shall not be ashamed that wait on me, uh, that wait for me. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Wow. That's some powerful stuff, isn't it, people? All righty. Well, we've done an hour study. And, um, yeah, I guess uh, we'll make this part one. Um, stay tuned for part two. What did they, you know, I remember uh, watching Adam West and... Um, and they would say, stay tuned for next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Well, 
I'm not Batman, but uh, you get the idea. Part two coming up. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor God to Father and His only begotten Son, which is Jesus the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Him. In Jesus' precious name, amen.